Great. So welcome everybody to this session. Today, I'm very happy that I get to speak about something that I'm very passionate about, which is essentially organizing meetups, organizing events, but ultimately, it's more about building communities. Very quickly, uh, my name is Juan. I was born and raised in Colombia. I am based in the Netherlands. I work for a Dutch company called Sivia. We do all sorts of consultancy. We're here with colleagues that do everything DevOps security. Me specifically, I work in data. But I guess literally everything that I'm gonna say during this presentation should be relevant regardless of what you do, like tech or not. And the beautiful thing is that even though I didn't originally thought of this as something that is similar to open source, the truth is quite a lot of the things that you learn from contributing to open source projects are very similar to the things that you learn and you do when you're contributing and organizing events. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Back in 2011, I became very popular and I, I amassed quite a lot of friends because I was just really good at organizing student parties. For me, it felt effortless to throw something up and with very little preparation, just get a room full of people that were having a blast. And that was kind of the moment when I realized like, oh, I have an interesting superpower. I had no idea it was gonna be ever useful outside of university time, but it was. Back when I graduated, for the first couple of years, I was completely broke. I think back then the coolest life hack that I ever learned was if you go to a meetup, you might learn a thing or two, maybe land a nice job, but more importantly, there is often free food. So during these two years of my life, I think I was attending one, two, three meetups a week. That was a little bit of my cycle, and I did learn quite a lot besides the free dinners, of course. Back in 2018, something magical happened. I attended this meetup, and at the end of the meetup, I thought to myself, you know, it's like the organizers were not even trying. There is so much that you could have done better around this meetup, and that's when it hit me. That is like, well, if you're so opinionated about this, then why don't you organize your first meetup? And so back in 2018, I started organizing this community called the Amsterdam Data Visualization Meetup, and it was amazing. Back then, I didn't have any support from my company to organize these events. It's not that they were against or anything, but uh, it was more a thing that I did in my free time. It was just me approaching other professionals, just making sure that people were in a room. And that was really contagious, really. Just the fact that with very little work, we're talking roughly 10 minutes of work, uh, sorry, 10 hours of work, you can gather some very interesting people in a room, you can learn from them, and you can just improve the community that you have around your city. Now, back in 2020, 2021, I also gave it a try. I started a couple of meetups, was not my cup of tea. But I'm happy to tell you that this year alone, I've organized eight meetups. I now work for a company that loves it. They actually have a space where we can organize meetups. And my boss is super happy that that's my superpower. Like, I don't write blogs. I'm probably the worst programmer in this room. But yet somehow, <laughs> I can provide a lot of value by doing this little activity. Let's talk a little bit more specifically the why behind meetups. I think there are three very compelling reasons to organize them. The first one is marketing. Meetups can cost somewhere between zero euros to maximum 3,000. And the amount of relevance that you get from this 
like there is no marketing effort that delivers you a hundred people that are passionate, experienced around the topic, and that live close to whatever it is that you're working. Like that amount of relevance is insane for something so cheap. The second approach is, sorry, the second reason is just leadership. It is amazing for the people who decide to organize these things because you get to practice project management, you get to practice networking, you get to practice public speaking. For those of you that maybe don't have a leadership role but that you think that you might want to grow into that direction, a meetup is a very low stakes opportunity to practice all of these skills. And not only leadership, that also goes to Everything, marketing skills, building, making banners, landing pages, all sorts of things that maybe you don't get to do in your day-to-day -day work. And the third one is because of the marketing, uh, sorry, networking. During these meetups, one, you get to meet peers that you would never normally, like, not meet in the wild. These are people that fully understand what you do, your profession, but maybe work for another company. So. This is kind of like the only place where you can really exchange ideas freely without like this air of competition. Also, if there are some people that you really admire, organizing a meetup is the perfect opportunity to reach out to them and say, hey, I think you will be an amazing speaker. I think I met some very interesting people just reaching out to them. And if they feel that your intentions are really community driven, more than just like getting a few hires here and there, people are very open towards volunteering for meetups. Now, one of the meetups that I'm currently organizing is the Analytics Engineering Meetup. If you have never heard of this profession, that's completely fine. This term started back in 2020, so it's a really, really new concept. But back then, back in the same year, I thought to myself, I really want to claim the analytics engineering meetup for myself. And it paid off. Nowadays, there are like eight of them, but they always have like analytics engineering meetup London. <laughs> so it was an interesting idea. These are numbers of exactly how it all started. Like back when I organized the first meetup, it took like a couple of months. Like I mentioned, not more than 10 hours of planning. But these were the numbers that we were able to amass. Uh, this is just a funnel of how many people joined the group. And ultimately, 40 people stayed the whole time. So this was enough to really prove to my manager, to my colleagues, like, hey, there is something in here. We just spent almost nothing to organize this. And we just got the attention of 40 people. That's, sadly enough, that's much, much better than the average email campaign. Now, let's, let's say that I inspired you and you want to go home tonight and organize your first meetup. What are some of the steps that you need? The first one is what I call creating an identity. So first, you need to determine a topic. You can go for something super broad, like developers meetup, or something very specific, like Kubernetes security. The more specific your topic goes, the more likely it is that your community is gonna be smaller, but you're gonna attract more advanced and more knowledgeable people. While broader topics tend to attract more beginners. There is no right and wrong approach. I personally, at the moment, I am having a meetup that is very beginner friendly and one that is much more advanced. And I really like that balance. Second thing is you need an identity. Like what is the thing about your event? And this, this is really all sorts of things from, is everybody allowed to be a speaker? Are you gonna pursue diverse speakers? Are you gonna take the extra mile? Are you, do you care if people do sell speeches or if, a talk feels like a marketing thing, or are you gonna ban certain technologies? Even, I've seen some meetups that make it a thing to organize a pop quiz at the end, and that was kind of their gimmick. All sorts of things can go into their identity. 
And finally, how you're going to push this. Now, the beauty of things is meetup.com, it's an amazing platform. It's uh, quite cheap. I think it costs like 70 euros a year. And it is surprisingly democratic. So it's not that you can pay. Actually, I don't know if that's fully true. But the point is, <laughs> with the 70 euro subscription, you get advertised. And those people that are in the platform get a really good chance to find out that your event is happening. But of course, you can set this up in all sorts of ways. Once you have it all set up and you have an idea of how your meetup is going to look, it's time for you to start organizing the first event. Before the meetup, there are three things that you need to arrange. The first one is a sponsor. Quite often, the sponsors are in charge of providing the venue and or things like food and drinks. In return, they sometimes get to send a speaker, they sometimes get to put a banner, they sometimes. Uh, you always have to, of course, be careful. Some people might have some intentions. Some... In fact, I one time was going to speak at a meetup, and because the sponsor was one of the competitors, they decided that I was not fit to be a speaker. So I guess you all know this. It's difficult because a lot of people might be willing to sponsor, but you also have to be careful not to sell your soul. There is the venue. Quite often, the sponsor would provide it. But sometimes that might not be the case. Now, uh, for the very first meetups that I organized, one time I had to pay it out of my own pocket. And in the end, for one of the meetups I organized, I ended up losing 200 euros, which wasn't that terrible. but. It's still kind of a challenge to find a venue because even though most companies have offices that are completely empty during the afternoons, sometimes they might not be fine with bringing strangers. Uh, the average meetup, just for your reference, is, in my experience, minimum five people, but maximum 100, 120. And you don't fully have control over how many people are going to show up. So that's what makes a venue a bit difficult. Just having some sort of place like a hotel or a conference venue like this and tell them, hey, uh, the day before or two days before, I will tell you how many people will show up. Already like this cards some people. So really finding a venue is tricky. I'm lucky my company is super happy with me sponsoring this at their venue. So that's amazing. And finally, it is the speakers, like the real meat and bones of the whole event. You need to find at least two speakers that are going to be part of the program. In theory, everybody who has something to say that they wish they would have known a month before counts as a valuable speaker. You shouldn't really discard uh, new people whenever they want to speak. but at the same time, it depends a lot on your audience. And finding very knowledgeable speakers, if you have some sort of uh, requirement, is tricky. To be really honest with you, I think the most difficult part of organizing meetups is always finding speakers. Because most people are either on holidays on those moments and personal commitments, or the truth is there is also quite a lot of people that feel that they're not interesting enough. So this is always something that is interesting. Amazing life hack, check other similar meetups in the area. If they have presented for those, chances are huge they're going to say yes to yours. Or contact me. Happy to present wherever you all are based. Now, I normally hate adding a lot of text to my slides. But since these slides are public, I just wanted to show you this is the template that I use whenever I reach out to a speaker. You can read it or not, but just some things that are interesting to contribute is normally when I reach out to a speaker, this is my templates, I make it very clear that I'm not selling them anything, I'm not trying to recruit them. Very early on, it has to be transparent that 
it is really an open source thing. I just, I think it's super fun when professionals gather and speak. Nothing to sell you. Second thing is, any tint of hesitation, regardless the event, it's a massive uh, red flag for people. So if you said, yeah, depending on your availability, we might plan this, we might, nah, nah, nah. we see if enough people are interested, uh, people tend to pick up on that. So my rules, at least whenever I organize a meetup, is I prefer <laughs> to be the only speaker and be very strict about my vision rather than giving the impression to people that the meetup might or might not happen. But that's just me. The next point that is important to handle is marketing. Now, as I mentioned, meetup.com does a lot of it for you. You just create the page and people will find out. And that's like amazing already. Organically, quite a lot of people sign up. I think for the average meeting without too much trying, between 30 to 60 people just come just from meetup. Even before you start advertising the whole thing. <laughs> but then, of course, there are paid advertisements and things like LinkedIn or Facebook. In fact, LinkedIn is quite interesting because you can literally target every person that has this job title or that uses these tools or that has this particular software in their profile. It kind of goes a little bit against the whole like community and organic growth and everything. But if you really need to reach out to everybody that has an expertise and that's your thing, you could do that with paid ads. The most important for me is word of mouth. Like reaching out to people personally and giving them the impression that they are gonna be missed if they don't join is much more powerful. When you tell a professional like, hey, uh, I really admire your, your work, I'm organizing this event, and uh, I'm very curious about your feedback. And when you reach out to your colleagues like, hey, I think this speaker is interesting because you seem to work in something similar. Whenever you build that bridge and reach to people personally, the chances of them coming up is much higher. I think we have all been guilty of ignoring those invites that Oh, they invited 2,000 people, so they're not gonna notice if I'm not there. And yeah, reaching out personally. Seven days before the meetup is where the most action takes. As I mentioned, my other rule is I really try my best to keep meetups under 10 hours of work. Just because you could organize a conference like this but then it stops being fun and it becomes like a full-time job. Well, if you have a team of two or three people and you keep them to 10 hours of work, that's very feasible for everybody involved. But it gets a bit more intense seven days before. First, that's when you have to start doing the most marketing because the most people sign up to your event the same week and the people that sign up in the last moments are the ones that are the most likely to attend. So it sounds weird, but you really want to prioritize people that sign up one hour before the event starts over the person that sign up like a month or three weeks in advance. As a matter of fact, I also only make the events available two weeks before, just for the same purpose. Also, it's very important to confirm to the speakers Tell them, hey, uh, the event is going on. This is the address we expect you here. If you need to work or have a call before, you can do here. Food is there and you should bring some people. Now, if you have three speakers and you tell those speakers to bring two people, that's already amassing quite a, quite a bit of people in there. So if every speaker would bring two or three colleagues, you don't have to worry too much about turn up. And finally, one thing that most people don't do but is very important is send some sort of confirmation to the attendants. Reach out to them on Slack, on Meetup, on LinkedIn, maybe even personally. I generally make one message on meetup.com saying, hey, this is the event, it's gonna happen here, 
just telling all of the little details who are going to be the speakers. And very importantly, asking them, if you cannot make it, please uh, withdraw your RSVP. That helps us make a much better estimate. Because, yeah, you know, for these things, I really don't like the meetups that charge you money, not even like symbolic one or two euros. I really like it if it's free and fully democratic. But when things are free, people might sign up and not show up. So just a little nudge, like, please help us be more clear if you're coming or not, makes a massive difference. On the day itself, you have some tasks. First one is welcome the guest, or be the ceremony master, really. Introduce the speakers, make sure that everybody gets a little introduction. Reach out to the speakers, ask them all sorts of things, like how do I pronounce your last name? Uh, last week I had a speaker from Finland, and I'm like, how do I pronounce your last name? I don't want to mess it up on stage. So just those little things are important. I also think it is very nice when you're doing this with colleagues because then you can assign roles. What I tell my colleagues is if you want to help with meetups, even if it's just one hour of your time or less, I'm fine with that. I don't expect them to be fully involved because there are quite a bit of roles that they can take during the day. The first one is, of course, the host, which is probably like the most intensive in terms of public speaking. And uh, I know quite some people don't like to volunteer for that. The second one is tech support, which the gentlemen at the back know how important it is. Just having somebody to handle the slides and the presentations and assist the speakers, the microphones, the recordings, and so on. But I also really like the figure of the body, as in getting a colleague and tell them, if you see somebody being shy or in a corner or alone or checking their phone, try to talk to them. If the event happens at your company and you work there, it's much easier for you to like reach out to new people than vice versa. So having somebody there to create a, an atmosphere for everybody is a, really like a great thing that doesn't happen too often. And then finally, there are the drinks. Whenever you do drinks, you need to work a little bit as catering. Maybe the sponsor, the venue, already provides that service. But in the past, there have been some times where I have to like bring the crates of beer myself and just stand behind and give it to people and assist them a little bit. So if you have some people dedicated to ordering the pizza, giving it to people and so on, putting it nicely, that, that works quite well. The tip that I also give is don't go cheap on drinks because the most value that comes out of meetups is in the drinks afterwards. Sure, the talks are really nice for people that want to learn, but the conversations that happen after, that's where recruitment happens, that's where like friendships happen, where uh, even you find new clients, you find everything. To me, that's really the core where the most interesting things are happening, so I really want to prioritize that. Now, I, I maybe should have mentioned this because I noticed some people taking notes, but uh, if you're interested in this topic, I actually created a Gitbook page. You can scan it, you can go there. It has all of the notes uh, with all of my knowledge on organizing meetups. Essentially, when I created this page, it was just for people that might want to create one. All of the steps that I mentioned and even more are pretty well detailed in there. So feel free to check out this link, send it to anybody. It is completely free, completely anything. And my call, yeah, my call to action for all of you is, one, consider meetups. They're amazing for a lot of reasons, as I just told you. Really underrated tool for companies. Two, check out the link. Maybe there are a couple of things here and there that you or one of your colleagues might appreciate. And three, if you're organizing a meetup or an event, let me know. Always happy to speak. 
How about meetups or something else? Thank you. I guess we can open up for questions. Yes. Sure. And if they attend to the to the meetup, then afterwards we return back the money. So only those that register but don't come back, don't attend the, the meetup. And, and then we've moved for from uh, 35, 40 percent of uh, people showing up to more or less 95 percent of people. So no, I wanted to share that. No, uh, that's an interesting strategy. Uh, maybe my remarks there is. It's tricky because what that would mean is that now you're allocating people to like checking who's coming and making sure that you have a list. So like that creates a little bit of overhead. If it's worth it, it's worth it. What I also do is, one, I completely overestimate the number. Like if I have a venue for 100 people, I invite 150 and that evens out. But it's, it's also important to to always remember that uh, like people have busy lives. It, it's also hard for me. Sometimes you organize something and the turn off is a bit disappointing, but you also have to know that okay, people have a lot of priorities and rather being sour that people don't show up consistently, it's about being grateful about the few people that show up and made it up. So it, attendance is always a tricky topic. But yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting system of getting the money back. I don't know if I would do it for my meetup, but if I have time, I would write it down there. Maybe yeah. quote you on that one. And also it's a measure that if one or two weeks before the meetup, we only have 10 people registered, then we can cancel the meetup. Yeah. If not, yeah, you don't, you don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Yes. Thank you for the talk. Uh, my question sure. is, how long before the meetup do you send out the first invitations? To the participants or to the speakers? Uh, to the speakers and to the participants okay. in general. So speakers, I am constantly looking for them. Like it's 24 seven, I meet somebody in a company, I'm a consultant, so whenever I go to a new assignment, I'm like, hey, you could be an amazing speaker. So you really try to create this pipeline of people. Uh, I think for speakers, maybe two months in advance, quite often is a good estimate. Uh, just because a, quite a lot of speakers in my experience would say immediately no if you give them less than a month. I don't, I don't know. But when it comes to attendees, when exactly you invite them, uh, my golden rule is never more than three weeks in advance. Between two and three weeks, really. Because if you start the event like two months before, a lot of people will sign up on the first weeks, and the likelihood of those people showing up is almost zero. But you also don't want to give it way too little time for people not to plan. So two or three weeks. This is also the Netherlands. I, I understand people in the Netherlands like to plan their weeks further ahead, but depending on where you're based, that might be a bit different. Thank you. Hi, uh, um, I Hi. have actually been running a Linux users group for almost 30 years now. Nice. Um, and uh, I, I like a lot of the features that meetup.com has. Um, I am still uh, not real pleased with the way that they decided to start monetizing back 
a very long time ago, and I've largely been boycotting them <laughs> ever since. Um, I don't really begrudge them making money. It's just they started charging organizers, and you know, uh, and it was a and it was a large sum of money for me at the time. Uh, yeah. So I was I was a bit offended. Um, anyway, I have been uh, trying to use a uh, uh, an open source tool called uh, uh, it's a it's at uh, gettogether.community. Um, it I've does leave a bit to be desired, and uh, um, I would love to see uh, them build a bit more of a community around it, but I was curious if anyone here had any other um, alternatives that they that they've tried that they like. To, to be really honest, and if somebody has something, let me know afterwards, but my experience is most of the alternatives are rather dying than growing. If we had this talk like 10 years ago, we could have said like, oh, uh, Facebook events is a great tool and so on, but now it feels like people are engaging much, much less on social media. I still see that some people still go to meet up, like for example, when I first came here to Bilbao, I'm like, hey, let's see if there are interesting meetups. And a lot of people have a habit of doing that. So to me, the beauty is that even though it costs and everything, it does bring some people that come to the platform. All of the other alternatives so far haven't been super happy, but I've tried it. I always try them first with uh, like personal parties and things like that, see if my guests like them, but so far I haven't been too happy with them. Yes. Um, this is uh, about the one strategy also to uh, make people appear. What do you think about co-hosting uh, or uh, co-organizing with uh, someone else, like a colleague or someone you can trust? This, uh, well, in my experience of uh, yeah. also organizing parties and things like this. So if you're an alone organizer, uh, do you, you're just gonna reach, I don't know, maybe 20 people that say, say hey, uh, please come to this, I'm organizing this, or, well, uh, as a uh, token of uh, appreciation, they, they will go. But if you do that for with three or four organizers that they have the same word, uh, yeah, that 20 might become like 50 or 60, and I'm speaking about big numbers, but uh, uh, do you see any disadvantage or do you see something like that? Why wouldn't you do that? Yes. Okay. So we it's, a, it's an interesting trade-off. I've organized meetups just by myself and with groups of, I think the biggest group was nine people. And what I notice is the smaller the group, the faster the decision making is. Maybe the quality of the end result is not that amazing, but to me it's very important that meetups don't overtake your job and don't become a burden. So. Nowadays, I try to organize them with three people, just because it's quite feasible to split, and like you do four hours, I do four hours, and so on, and if somebody's a bit busy, you take over. But the more people you introduce in the event, one, uh, you suddenly shift into becoming a project manager, and making sure like, do you reach out to the speakers, whose responsibility was that? You sometimes start, uh, having a Kanban board for your meetups. And, and then when you have very large groups, like it has happened to me when I organize proper conferences, it becomes very hard to have some discussions. As in somebody, it's really pro something and the other person isn't. And you spent a lot of time like mediating these, these talks. So it is really the trade-off between quality and overhead that you want to have. I really like three or less. Okay. And it gets much easier after you have done it sometimes. Like, I wouldn't be afraid of organizing on my, on my own, but I guess for the first times it's nice to have a small group. Cool. Are there any questions online? Is somebody watching online? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Good. If that was it, once again, very happy to have you here. Very curious about your stories, why exactly you care about meetups. I understand now some of you already organized them. So uh, happy to chat. Feel free to check the resource that I share on the screen. All of my contact information is in there in case you want to reach out, have a chat, or once again, invite me as a speaker. But with that said, thank you very much for attending and I wish you an amazing uh, few last days in Bilbao.